You can start by your uh, telling me a little bit about your earliest memories of your home life, what it was like in the house that you lived. Well, uh, it, uh, my father, uh, I was uh, fairly young, so we only had the mother really to bring. Was your father gone from your? Did you know your father at all? No. No. I didn't. Yeah, I my sister did. Oh, because you were the youngest, right? Were you about three years old when he died? Yeah, Something like that? Also. Yeah. What I know about him is what my mother told me. So right. Yeah. So from your earliest memories, it was really your mother and the three of you yeah. living in a house. In an apartment. In an apartment. And your, your grandmother didn't live with you, did she? Not at that time. Not at the beginning. So did your mother actually work? Was she working? Well, she had a business. My father had a business. She took over the business, which wasn't going too well. You know. So we. What was the business card? Picture frames, tattoos. So she had she worked with him in the business before he died? No. 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 So when he died, she moved in to she do it. Not too good. It was going down really. It was. It was, um, we not as familiar with it. It's a, it was harder for her. Business, so. What? Give me a sense of the time frame, Kurt. What year would that have been? You were born in seventeen. 17? So maybe around twenty twenty one. Yeah, somewhere around. So things. The general economy in Vienna at that time was good. In other words, it wasn't that you, did, you weren't under any kind of persecution or anything. Uh, yeah, it was relatively good. Uh, could we have a, a minimum of noise in the kitchen, please? <laughs> 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 Sorry. Um, so really it was more, it was just difficult for your mom to look after three yeah. kids. Yeah. And did how, what about... Um, Eventually my sister was lived with my grandmother, so, yeah. but, but because uh, we didn't want to leave her alone, and there was nobody else who... So my sister moved out and she... She moved in with your grandmother? She lived in my grandmother. How old did your sister have been then when she did that? Twelve? Uh, Thirteen? I, I really don't remember. Don't remember. What, do you remember what that was like, her moving out? Did it feel like she was leaving the family? or? No. 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 no we were very close. Did your grandmother live quite close to you? Not that close, but uh, street covered. So everything was kind of, everything was in the same... Same of course. Do you remember anything about the neighborhood, Kurt? What was it like, you know, the streets and other, did you talk to the neighbors? Yeah, we had, we had a lot of, quite a few kids in the neighborhood, so we had a lot of kids in the building and in the neighborhood. There was a fair amount of Jewish people living so Did you did the kids all play in the street? Like did you? Uh, not too much. Not too we much. Uh, it wasn't we like an outdoor. Uh, yeah. Because it was a, uh, I mean, there was traffic on the street, so. You yeah, wasn't you conducive to playing it on the street? Uh, it was too risky to play on the street. Yeah. So you would play inside people's inside apartments? Inside the apartment, the house, with every house had a yard, sort of. Sometimes they played in there, but then the neighbors complained. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any uh, friends that you remember that from that time? Yeah, some. Not too many, actually. Uh, 
been all over the world afterwards. So. You would have been. But uh, there were some girls, some boys. Were you and Eric close? I mean, do you remember like he would have yeah. been your best friend that you would have yeah, spent we the most were time with? The, mostly, we were very close. You were. So it wasn't a competitive kind of. No. No. no, no. Well, you, you're really close in age, aren't you? I mean, you're uh, a year and a bit. Sixteen months, I think. Yeah, very. So you're sixteen months. Your sister was the eldest, right? Yeah, she's yeah. the eldest. About sixteen months older than Eric. Oh, so you all three were very close. Yeah, three of them. So did you both terrorize your sister? <laughs> no, not really. Was she was she part of your friendship? Was she very? Yeah, she. But Eric and I were closer than we were with our sister. But yeah. Maybe because we had different interests. You know, she was more grown up woman than. We well, and she she moved away as well. Then she moved away. So. Yeah. Do you, did you and Eric share a room? Did you sleep in the same room? All the time, yeah. So would you, do you remember, because I know uh, Loftus and Jim shared a room and they would talk before yeah. they fell asleep. Did you and Eric used to talk? I guess so, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what we talked about. It was probably awkward. <laughs> <laughs> right from an early age. Yeah. Well, they always had music and uh, my mother. We Tell me about the that. Radio a lot. Listen to the radio a lot. Yeah. We had fairly good program. What was the what was on the radio? Was it opera on the radio? What was the all sorts of things, but uh, quite a bit of uh, symphony and opera. Not Did only, but uh, quite a bit. Did your mother really like that too? Yeah, that's where it really comes from. Oh, it was really her. And did she come from a tradition of a lot of music in her family? No. Uh, actually, my grandfather was a rabbi. Yeah. You know, and music was not encouraged in the Jewish families. Oh, because it wasn't, it would be, he being religious would have thought it was. But, but uh, all his kids. Are not very religious, except and one. Quid's father was the only one who was religious. The others are really. They kept the holidays. They were Jewish, but uh, like you and I, keep your kippah, keep uh, as we show them. But Nothing more than that. Uh, so did she? Your mother loved. They all could play an read instrument. Read Hebrew, like. Oh, they could read Hebrew really well. Perfect, wonderful, perfectly. They were all brought up in a religious environment. environment yeah. Did your mother, so I guess she wanted you all to kind of know, did you learn Hebrew as well when you were we growing up? We were headed to school one hour a week. <laughs> Not very much. No, one or two hours a week, I forget. Two hours a week. But you were bar mitzvah though. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But we didn't rattle off the whole thing. We just said a broche. Oh, it wasn't at all the long. It wasn't that long. So. Did your mother talk to you about her upbringing? Like, do you, did you remember memories of her talking about her father? Did you know? You didn't yeah. know the rabbi, did you? No. He was gone already. Yes. Yeah. Uh, like, did she talk about him being a kind of powerful man or a... Not, uh, that must have been quite a happy household, as far as I can figure out. Yeah. Because there were a lot of kids, of course. Yeah. Did they live in the, the same kind of area? Uh, they lived in France, as well. They lived in Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovakia. He was a rabbi in Eger, in France, so, so she spoke, what languages actually, did she speak then? 
a German. German. But uh, that's called the Sudeten. Um, it was a German part of Czechoslovakia. Well, that part Hitler annexed. That's right. That's why Hitler said that it that's our part. To German. Right. Because it's German it's speaking. German speaking. But uh, uh, this, uh, I don't know uh, how, uh, what kind of household it was, but it must have been pretty. I mean, they were all very well brought up. Your uncle, your father, your grandfather, yeah. his brother, and sister. Very he, bright people, uh, very educated people. They, our grandmother. Is the second wife of the rabbi. He was married before. They were children from the oh, first Oh, from the first wife. wife. Oh. So there were a lot of children. Some were half sisters or brothers. Oh, I see. So the um, the Thank second you. wife had some children as well. Then with him, with well, the, the second wife was uh, your grandfather. Your mother. My, my mother, my my uncle, my aunt. But oh, the, the other ones were much older. They the were. The other ones were a little bit older. There was one which I knew in Czechoslovakia from the first marriage. We called Diane, of course, but uh, and there was the one in the states. Um, oh. He was a half brother of my mother. What was his name? Do you remember his name? Oh, I, I knew it was. But so I he had know. a lot of children, the rabbi. Yeah, yeah. Did did they? I'm thinking of your mother and my grandfather. Did they go to a formal school as well? Yeah. They did, but they would have been taught. Would they have been taught by the rabbi, or would they have? No, maybe Hebrew. Uh, yeah. Religious. Right. They all went to went to school. So there was no music in that household, though. Not that you know. Not that I know. Yet they were all very musical. They, they were, were, eh? Yeah. We had one uncle, not your grandfather, his brother, uh, who was fabulous in music. He should have been a musician. If he wouldn't have been Jewish, he would have been a musician. Uh, he played an instrument? No, he didn't, because none of them learned. Oh, the he instrument. wasn't allowed. Oh. But he, how, how would his musical... Uh, uh, his knowledge of music was fabulous. Like, you could ask him practically any symphony or something, and he could whistle you the tune. Uh, really? He has this fabulous memory of uh, music. So their knowledge of music would have come from listening to the radio? The radio. Yeah. After they left home. When they left. And did they all, when they left, when they grew up and moved away, did they all kind of move to the same? All to Vienna. All to Vienna. So they all of them stayed close and were always in touch with each other. So did Actually, you? Actually, your father, on this uncle, which was so good in music, we were in business together for a while. They split up eventually. Would that have been the furniture business that he yeah. maintained? That's right. That they both had a furniture. Which but brother was them. that? What? Which brother was that? Hugo. Hugo. Oh, okay. Uh, at one time they were together, they had a business together. Eventually they decided to split separated out. Split separated. Just because they didn't it didn't work out or I, you don't know I, I why. Don't know why. Was I don't have a sense of my grandfather being musical though. I mean, uh, I don't know if he was or not. Maybe he, he would have loved the opera though too. Right? Yeah, I think he would. Not as much as probably as uh, Hugo. Hugo. Um, Ernst was not. Uh, Kurt's father was. It was, wasn't musical. Was not musical. And yet, look at Kurt though. Because his mother. His mother played piano. Oh. She came from a family where they all played piano, where they all knew music. And she insisted that he learned piano. And he started very young. 
Well, did Kurt, Kurt would have been in your world, like he would have been, oh, you would have seen him a lot. And yeah. Did he come to the opera with you and Eric? No, no. He didn't, eh? He's too young. Too, oh, he would have been about my mother's Age. contemporary, right? Mm. Yeah. Uh, but do you remember... Uh, we beat him up sometimes, <laughs> Eric and I. Considering the size that he grew to be, that would have to have been early on in his <laughs> life. The two of us. <laughs> You remember doing that? Did you terrorize your younger cousins? Occasionally, yes. Yeah. <laughs> My mother too? Yeah. No. Oh, come on. You would have teased her too, wouldn't you? Didn't see her at all that often. No? She didn't come over or you didn't go to her family? We saw her later when our grandmother moved in with us and they all came to. But almost everybody visits us again. There we met sometimes. So she was kind of the glue. Yeah. They were, we had a relative in Linz. We had one aunt in Linz. Uh, that's a girl in England, which is the daughter yeah. of one of them. My mother's told me about that. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, your mother didn't know them, really, the kids. She would have been too young, probably, to, or they just never saw away. each other. Yeah, no they didn't see them. They didn't come into Vienna from Linz mm. then. Eric didn't know them. Couldn't remember them either. When they saw them. Would you remember? What do you remember about your grandmother's personality? Oh, wonderful. Very calm. Was she? A, she was a commanding presence, though. Like everybody respected her. Respected her, but she wasn't uh, taking command of anything. She was sort of. She you never know, was domineering or anything. Was she closest with your mother of all her children? Yeah. My mother looked up there was. We were all close to her. Yeah, she yeah. must have been a... She was a wonderful woman. So she wasn't critical of her children? She didn't... No, no. I, sometimes I stayed with her. When I stayed overnight and my sister went out. And, and she didn't want to go home because my grandmother lived in the outskirts. We lived down in the in, inner set. Right. So she stayed with us and I went there because they didn't want the grandmother alone in the house, in the apartment. At, do you so, remember those nights, those times you spent with her? Uh, still? Well, well, I always loved to go there. Did you listen to music or what was... No, no. No, no. So you would just... I was treated royal. Oh, she loved her grandchildren. Yeah. Did Eric go as well or you mainly you? Occasionally, I guess, but I think I went more often than Oh, because you were the baby, so you got to yeah. be... Uh... <laughs> I got pushed around. But, uh, yeah, no, our grandmother was very... Wonderful woman. When did your grandmother actually move in with you in, at your house? After Hitler. After Hitler. So it had nothing to do with her health or it was just because it was getting... She was perfectly healthy. She would, she would have been a, not an older person either. Like she would have been in her 60s maybe? When I, when I left in 38, she was 92. Oh, she was an older person, but pretty healthy, pretty yeah. vigorous, even for 90-something. Yeah. So She didn't go out too much. She didn't like to walk around the streets. She, because of just her health or just fearful? I don't know, maybe she had a bad experience or something. Yeah. I, don't, I really don't know the reason, but... Uh, I know that she didn't go out of it, but only if she had to. Yeah. Did, it sounds like the families, though, and maybe you can describe before Hitler and after, but the families would habitually get together a lot anyway. Yeah. That there would be a lot of occasions. Uh, all of my grandmother. At your grandmother. And that would that be for a Sunday dinner or any time, well, Friday uh, night maybe? Well, not necessarily dinner, but everybody got there in the afternoon or the morning. And 
Oh, any time at all. Yeah. And that would have been Ugo and Ernst and Emil and everybody would have been there. Yeah. With the children and the and wives and Emile, and did everybody Emile get Emile along? Everybody. No big problem. All the spouses. I don't know how close they were otherwise, but uh, everybody got there, everybody got along. The beginning, sometimes they listened to the radio or something. The kids would the kids be kind of in one room playing, and the adults would be in another, or you'd all be yeah, together. Yeah, depends on the age. You know, they vary from. Oh. My mother was quite quite a bit younger, I think. Yeah, than she was. Ten years younger than you, so. so, so uh, was she so kind of a spoiled little kid? She was a brat, yeah. <laughs> but uh, she, you paid her back. <laughs> <laughs> but she did to her mother. <laughs> so it's an even. Uh, it's <laughs> it goes around, comes around. Uh, was was it all kind of? Was there a lot of food? Was there a lot of talk? A lot of food. There was enough food. <laughs> there was not, uh, there was, uh, we always ate a lot of fruit. There was always fruit about. Oh, really? Uh, Fresh fruit? Yeah. Oh, is that where you got your apple? Uh? I guess so. <laughs> uh, we, uh, Did your mother, I, your mother must have been a great cook, though. Yeah. What did she do, Kurt, after the business fa failed? Like, how did she support you? What happened then? Well, uh, at this point, Eric and I just started working her. So. When you were finished high school, just after high school, or how did you do that? Well, we didn't go to high school. It was a different system. Uh, Eric took some accounting after school and I took electric. Oh, this would have been after grammar school? And, uh, after regular school. Yeah. yeah. So you went out and apprenticed? Yeah. You trained and apprenticed and you're well, chosen? We went to school but in the evenings because we worked during the day. And did you work in the field where you were training or was it? I, I did. So did Eric actually. He worked in an office. It took accounting with that. Or Do you remember that it was a tough kind of life doing a lot of that? Well, it was a lot of work. Yeah. Because it was tough to work and to go to school. And you were, but you were able to make a bit of money then to help. Yeah. We, so your mother wasn't working at that point. No. Well, the business still existed, but it wasn't uh, the greatest income. So, but between the three of us. You were able to bring in enough. What what was Annie doing then? Hmm? What was your sister doing then? She was with my grandmother. She was with your grandmother. She wasn't working. She was. Did she go to school though? She must have. I really don't remember. You don't remember. So when, so you really, you were working by about the age of sixteen, if not sooner. Uh, about fifteen. Fifteen. And then you finished your training and you went to work full time. Well, I worked full time until the evening I went to school. Oh, yeah, it was a day to full day job and then... And did you work on... You didn't work Saturday, but did you work on Sunday? Oh, sure. You did. It was a six day week. Yeah. And would you work all day Friday or just... Oh, yeah. sure. You did, eh? It was a full time job. Do you remember, though, that you felt good that you were developing a career you liked the job did you like I liked the job uh, but uh, especially later on when I knew more about it what I learned in school I found it quite interesting it was electronics yeah. and you took to it right away like you radio mainly the radio system there wasn't much else Record players. But what was the actual work? Working on radios or? I did mostly repair work on radios. People brought in radios which don't work. 
Were they like big? Some of them. Really? Yeah. But, but all sorts of things. So really, did you work in an environment where there were a lot of people working on different, it was quite a small it shop? It was small, basically a retail outfit which put took in repairs and all this thing. And did you find you developed really quickly the ability to kind of size up a problem with a radio and be able to fix it? Yeah, well, in the beginning there was some other fellow that would do more than I did. And so I learned from him partly, but then I went to school and eventually I knew what to do. But it wasn't... then uh, we also, people came around and needed advice, how do I build this and how do I do that. So we, we did that too. So it, the environment was quite, it was really more focused on having an apprenticeship that yeah. you'd learn from an expert and then... And schooling. And schooling. But at some point in your mind, did you imagine, I'll have my own shop one day, or you didn't think that I, far? I didn't think so far. <laughs> but you must have found it, qu it quite tiring to work the... Uh, Oh, well, it's that age. You can do it, yeah. Um, do you remember in your household, Kurt, when the whole family would be together, there'd be talk of politics and, you know, what was happening in Vienna and Germany. Did, did people talk about those things, or...? I, I really can't recall. Can't recall that? Think, but I'm sure they did, because... Uh, they were all in business and they all had problems with law. Yeah. Uh, Everybody was experiencing you that. You can't do that, you know. But, what, uh, what did Ugo and Ernst work at? Do you remember what their jobs were? Uh, Hugo had the business. Oh, Hugo had the business, okay. And Ernst worked in a bank. Oh, he did? In France, actually, there was a French bank, Lendemann. And uh, my grandfather had his business the whole time. Yeah. That never changed. And my, I guess my grandmother worked in the business with him a little yeah. bit too, right? And the business was very close physically to their home as well, right? Uh, reasonably, reasonably yeah. in close. walking distance. I yeah. Did people tend to, nobody had cars, no. it was all street car. Yeah, and walking. Yeah. Yeah. Did you do any sports? Was sports a part of your life? Mm, not really. No. So at what age did you and Eric start going to the opera? When did that... Uh... So, Eric started a bit before I am, I think. But uh, late teens. And there was always something to go to. Like there was yeah, well, we went to the opera, we went to the theater. We had a stage theater, which had, uh, had showed all kinds. There was a lot of theaters in Vienna, but basically we only went to one most of the time, not the opera. Do you remember what that theater was called? The theater? Yeah. The book theater. And so was it a once a week kind of it thing? It was a, a, a state owned. It was owned by this. Oh, really? State. It wasn't a private theater. The, the opera, the, the theater, were run by the government. The government. And so that meant they were quite well financed, probably. Reasonably well, I guess. Uh, Did that didn't mean? Didn't really worry about it at that time. <laughs> but did that mean the tickets were a little cheaper? The tickets were not really that cheap, but uh, we belonged to a group which got it cheaper. Uh, so it wasn't we that? We didn't pay all that, but for then we, we never went, uh, we only went standing room. So you'd have to go and line up? I have never. The first time I was in a seat in Vienna was when we went back. In March, and I went back, said I had a seat in the Vienna <laughs> Opera. 
Otherwise, we would always steady. That would have been quite rough standing for some of those operas. No. No. Not all that much. There well, were we did many, that. Many people standing. A lot of people standing, and the sight lines were quite good, even when you were standing. Yeah. Well, some of it, but you know, many people at that time, it was the same gang. They didn't have to see the stage. They knew exactly what was going on anyway. Oh, really? Yeah, as long as you hear it, it's... Uh, Did you know all the operas at that point? Like, or well, you, you don't know all the operas. You learn as you go As along. you go. Did your mom ever come with you to the opera? No. No. But did she, she loved it though. Yeah. Is there any reason but, why she didn't come or... Does well, I guess financially. Financially. Uh, I mean, she would listen to it on the radio, but uh, when you and she Eric couldn't stand she for that long, yeah. Well, when you and Eric would get home, would she ask you about it? You'd talk yeah. about it. Yeah. Did you find it was really exciting seeing the opera like that? I, I always found it exciting to go to a performance, whether it was opera or anything else. There was well, a certain thrill. In Oh, and especially as you get to know the music, it yeah. would get better. And even today, it's sort of nice to walk into a concert hall or not the opera. The sense of anticipation. And yeah. Well, did you have a group of friends that you, I know you and Eric went, but did you go, and did you have a group that you'd just kind of go well, out with we, afterwards? We, or? Had, we knew some people at the opera, we, were, so we got together every time we were there, but we never met outside. Uh, it was just an opera crowd. Because we met uh, once or twice a week at the concert or at the opera. So. And it would be uh, an evening performance usually? Yeah. Yeah. Never matinee? No. no. So uh, it would end at 11 o'clock or midnight. Right. You couldn't go out for coffee after. No. You didn't go out after. You didn't know the water money. There wasn't that much money. Yeah. And I guess you would sit, though, and talk about the opera in, that, in, the, in the intermissions, though. You'd... Yeah, but uh, we talked about all sorts of things. I guess soccer was all the... Oh, big at that time. We weren't that much interested, but still it was big enough then. So, like a Viennese soccer team? Was that the...? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. There were a few. There was a Jewish soccer team. Oh, really? Aqua. Oh, isn't that interesting? There was a Jewish sports organization. There was soccer, swimming, all sorts of things. Well, it's, it was probably was like a Jewish Y or something like that. Uh, Kurt's father, on Ernst, he went to many soccer games. He usually, sometimes he took us uh, once, twice a year. He took Eric and me along to a soccer game. But uh, he went to, uh, he was interested in sports more than in music. Oh, really? Was that was, good. yeah. The, did Kurt, and Kurt, I guess, was quite athletic too. Kurt was athletic. He got yeah. to, he lived. He swam very well, he learned it properly, we didn't, and... Oh, you weren't, you and Eric weren't swimming at that age? No. 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 Was, was there like a kind of recreation center though, or a place where you could, a gymnasium? Some, there or? were some, but uh, we weren't Part of that. all that interested in So there wasn't a lot of kind of going out with the friends? Oh. That wasn't a big part of your life. I think Eric went skiing a few times. I never skied in there. But, uh, so these were all things you took up when you came to Canada? Yeah, because I had nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> you had more time on your hands. Well, yeah. did you feel that you were busy all the time, though? That, I mean, between work? Oh, you'd be in. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. There was always. Uh, Reading uh, books. And there was just things to do. Did there were lots of things. So, so at the time you were maybe eighteen, Eric was nineteen. 
they, did, were there girls in your life? Like, did you have, did you oh, date? A few, but not, uh, not anything. Not, not serious. They didn't seek you out? <laughs> <laughs> no, they. They were more friends than anything else. Really. Yeah. So were, uh, well, it sounded like. That, um, sex didn't start so the honest. <laughs> No, but even just dating a little bit, like yeah, we did, but it, uh, not that much. Not that much. No. Yeah. Do you remember your mother talking to you about girls, or she didn't do that at no. all? Like that was just something you were supposed to you figure find, out. You figured it out if you want. <laughs> that girls are not boys. <laughs> well, it was quite a. Um, it almost sound, seems like you and Eric had a, built the life that you liked and yeah. you, you didn't need a lot of... Yeah. We had what we wanted to do with this. Did you feel like you had money for the things you wanted? Or really there was always a sense that it was no, always, tough? Uh, uh, you had to be careful, careful not to spend it on the best thing you want to do. You couldn't like go out and buy a lot of clothes or anything like that? No. no. But would you, and I guess you wouldn't eat out meals? Very, very, very rarely. rarely. But you were surrounded by such good cooks, and I'm sure the food was great. Uh, you know, you don't miss those things if you're not... If they're not part of your life. Age. Yeah. No. So maybe... Well, there was always a problem, of course, with anti-Semitism. Austria is very anti-Semitic. Yeah, to watch out for that too. Was that something you felt your whole life, Kurt? That you know that there was always a sense that Jews were not liked, or was it only later, you know, as you got well, older? It got, la worse got later, worse. but also it was very anti-Semitic always. Yeah. Much more in Germany. The Hitler started in Germany, yeah. but. Uh, but he yeah. was Austrian anyway to start. Well, he was Austrian anyway to yeah. start. But yeah. He always had to, especially in the country. Yeah. Oh, it was worse in the country. It was worse. Yeah. Vienna, there were many Jews and they could get lost. Do you remember a point in your life, Kurt, when things started to change in Vienna? That all of a sudden it was, I, I mean, I'm sure it was Hitler coming in was the beginning of it, yeah. but do you it remember was a when? a drastic change. It was a, a kind of, first of all, you, you lost your job. First, and, uh, was your employer Jewish? Do you remember that? Yeah. So would his business have folded or? Well, it closed up more or less. It was closed. Slowly. Either you got rid of it, so if you, if you were lucky, you sold it, but uh, or they took it away anyway. Yeah. Then it got tough, and it was already. So you couldn't work, and like it was a gradual erosion of all. Of deterioration. Do you remember that happening quickly, or was it more over months that you well, saw? Fairly quickly, quickly in the beginning. That would have been around 36? 30, oh, as late as 38. The Hitler came in around 36, yeah, didn't he? 30, 38. 38, okay. Oh, so really the changes once they started were pretty rapid. We were fast. What was your... all the experience in Germany. With the new one, what they do right away. Once they asked them, uh, uh, they were the anti Semitic to begin with, so there was no problem for them. Had you had personal experiences with anti Semitism, the things that, or was just in your life you knew that? Well, everybody had some personal experience. So you got arrested, you got this. Uh, uh, they always had some experience. Yeah.
did um, for you, and I guess Eric too, did you did you start thinking, okay, what what's going to happen? Like, how did you how did you talk about what was happening? Did you remember having conversations about it? Well, uh, the conversation I had to get out, I had to get out of us to work in New York. And if they like, uh, Marge mentioned Eric downstairs, his name is also Eric. Yeah. Uh, his family has a lot of money, well, sufficient money to go to Shanghai. But I didn't even know about Shanghai at that time. I never heard about it until I came to Canada. Uh, but that cost a lot of money. If you didn't have the money, there's, uh, there's thousands of dollars in transportation to get them. Yeah. People would have had... money to buy the ticket, is fine. And the visa was easy to get. But uh, that was sort of out of question for, for us. So we couldn't afford the money, and we wouldn't afford it because then my mother wouldn't have it. Yeah. Uh, well, you weren't thinking in terms of leaving your mother, like you would have wanted to go... Well, uh, no, everybody... Uh, everybody who could get out, got out. Did you see people leaving around you a lot? Like, you'd, yeah. see, you'd people would tell you we're going, and they'd say yeah. goodbye, and that would be... And did they tell you where they were going, or...? Well, most of them were going to the States, or England, or France. Some of them were going east. Uh, uh, the sister of the mother, that's a complicated thing. You know the girl in England? Yep. Her, sis her mother had a sister. This sister went with her husband and she had a little boy. And they went. Poland, I think. Oh, yes. And, of course, they got then killed in Poland. They went from England to Poland? No, no, from Austria. Oh, Austria to Poland, oh. So some people went east, but all the people who went east... There wasn't any safer there. One of my there. friends went east, too. I had a very good friend who went east. He got a job in Poland. So it was... The other was in, in electronics. He was really smart. He was a specialist in transformers. He got a job in Poland, but he died so. Did people think Poland was going to be safe? Well, anything was safer than us. Um, and you took what you could get. Um, right. You, you wouldn't have listened and said, oh, pick. Yeah. You wouldn't have known then that England was probably safer than Poland. Like, that yeah. wouldn't have been... But England will always consider safer because there was the water in between. Yeah. But uh, France was considered fairly safe, Italy, and the Mussolini showed up with Hitler. So anti-Semitism never took a great, uh, never took off in Italy. No. Maybe because they are too hard to differentiate the Jews from the Italian. Uh, I don't think the Italians had it in them to be, uh, they were too concerned with other Italy is not anti-Semitic, anti no. Not as much as Germany or Austria. So did they... Or Poland. Poland is terribly anti-Semitic. Yeah. And you would have known that. Or, or would you have not known that in Vienna? Yeah, it, would have been, it was known, but uh, again, uh, if you go it, it is 100% anti-Semitic, it is 50% anti-Semitic. Go to the 50% less, if you can. So it's a matter of getting out of the worst situation. Right. So how did your plans evolve? Like how did you and Eric think about, okay, what well, do we Eric do? applied, we, we lined up it. Would you go every so day to... We went to uh, different consulates every night to be the, the morning. You were chased away by the police, you got back. And so it was a, not particularly a fun time, but uh, 
you couldn't get visas. It was very hard to get visas. Eric applied, I answered an ad in the, in the Austrian paper, I think, to that uh, British uh, consulate. And he got the job in Brussels. Oh, and that was, oh, okay. So he, and that would have been what about, before, that was before the war started. Yeah. Yeah. He got the job in 38 or beginning 39. So what was his departure like? Was that, uh, do you remember his departure? Yeah, I, I walked with him to the railway station and said goodbye. You really didn't know when you were going to see each other again? Uh, he went to Brussels. Did your mother find that? How was, do you remember? My mother was very happy. She was, oh. of us was out. Oh, it wasn't the... the, the I mean, at this point, uh, you're not going to be so selfish, I'll miss him. No. Uh, you're missing, I'll be killed, so... Uh, yeah. Uh, concentration camps were known. At that point, you would have sensed war was coming, right? You would have known, or was it not really even? Well, we knew about concentration camps. We knew about, uh, but it wasn't that bad as it became later. I had a few friends which wound up in concentration camps, but they all came out eventually. So people would be taken away and then come back. Uh, well, then they got a visa. The Jewish organization got him out to send him to any country in the world and, and we applied for everything which was open. And you saw an ad and I applied for an ad in Bolivia. Really? For electricity. I needed people to work on. Did you hear back from them? Uh, I don't think I Bolivia, wow, that would have been right across the, the world. But you didn't care. You, you took anything. What what were the your living arrangements like at that time? Like people had did, people were having to give up their apartments and move well, in we together. We had an apartment, but uh, it wasn't all that great. It wasn't all that were you still in your same apartment? Yeah. With but with your mom, and by then your grandmother, grandmother. was. And my sister. At one time we were all together, Eric, my mother, my grandmother, Eric, my sister and I. Was there room for everybody in the apartment? Mm -hmm. There was room for everybody, oh, yeah. yeah. For the Did other people move in with you then, or you were able to stay? No, we were still. But it was fairly tight. I mean, we didn't have all that much money, and there was all that much food. You had to be careful. You couldn't really freely move around during the day, could you? Or was it more curfewed at, at night? At that time there was no... They didn't have the yellow... The yellow star yet. Star. But you had to be careful. You got to... Occasionally you got caught. How would they know? They ask you. They would just stop you on the street? What would they do? Are you Jewish? Uh, like an SS guy would stop you? Yeah. There were so there were German troops walking around. Well, Austrian. Oh, Austrian. Oh, Austrian troops would just stop um, you. The Austrian had a big organization uh, illegally already in Norway. When they asked you that, would you be truthful or would you lie? Uh, you better be truthful in case. They ask you for documents or something. So you really didn't want to be stopped? No. So you, did, you tried not to go out very much? Well, if you went out, you were trying to be careful if there was something going on, going around it. Uh, yeah, don't draw attention to yourself. Um, yeah. Were there... As invisible as it can be. How, how did you manage to keep 
you know, you wouldn't have had a lot of money? Like, where would the money have been coming from? Was it savings or what? Well, did we were able to, was Eric still working at that time or? Eric worked a little bit longer than I am. But it was savings and you just help from different food organizations, different Jewish organizations. Because it was a very large population of Jews in Vienna, wasn't it? I mean, yeah, fairly. So you, there was a big community. Practically community. all Jews in Austria were in Vienna. In Vienna. Maybe there were some in Linz and Graz, but very few. We had a relative in Linz. But what would have been happening with the rest of the family at that time, Kurt? You know, we, your cousins and your uncles. Like, how did they? Um, like, did, how did they cope with everything that was going on? Did you? Well, uh, I really don't know. But, uh, so there wasn't a lot of family get-togethers at that point? No. No, that, those stopped. That uh, didn't. Just wasn't safe anymore? No. Even the rabbis in Vienna, this. Uh, don't worry about the minion. Oh. You can say your prayer alone if you normally would have a minion. Do it alone because we don't want to have ten Jews together. Yeah. You can be arrested. <laughs> well, there was no sense of. Um, but there were organizations which helped, which tried to get people out. Like your mother, kids, and sports. Right. They were immediately. They try to get as many people out as possible. I guess younger people would have been more fortunate. Yeah, easier to get out younger yeah. people than older people. Do you remember though people saying, like that there would have been a sense people saying nothing, like it seems bad, but like we're as much a part of this society as the non-Jews? Or that people realized pretty quickly there was no way. There was a definite division. Like, uh, they, could, they rounded up Jews and let them clean the streets with toothbrushes or some stupid thing. So, uh, your grandfather got caught in one of those things. In one of those roundups? Yeah. He would have been a, and he was a, he was, he was a soldier in the First World War. So uh -huh. He had been a soldier from the First War, I think. Uh, I don't know. Wasn't that the case, Lofty? What did you say here? My grandfather was a soldier in the First War. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so he would have been... That's uh, right. Too. We have a picture of him in his uniform. Oh, my, my father was in the First World War. So he, he, there probably would have been a sense of like I can't believe this is happening. I'm as no. I'm as much a nationalist as. But uh, they didn't care. No. Did you do you remember when my mom left? Or you didn't know that? You don't. I remember really that? don't know because we that time you were and we didn't get together as regularly. So so Eric left, and then how did things start to unfold for you? I. I don't really know how I, you know, you applied for so many things that you don't know what you applied for. <laughs> <laughs> when Eric left, you kept going back to the consulates. You would continue to do I, that. I tried still to all this thing, but uh, somehow then I got a notice from the Jewish community in Vienna so that I can get on a transport to England, to kitchen camp. So that's fine. Well okay. taken. And uh, that was in 39, just shortly before the war. Like days before the war, right? Two weeks. You must have been quite well, relieved. Didn't know you didn't know, but you must have been quite relieved when that finally but, uh, so I went on the rounds first, I told my mother, my mother said, by all means, better go. So, 
good for everybody. Uh, the more si people you get out, the better you. Was your sister still alive then? No, she was. She, she died. died How was your mother at that time? Like, what was she? Uh, was she. Very, very bad. Yes. Pretty, you mean just depressed or, or? Yeah, well, she lost her daughter and all the other situation on top of it. How old was she then, do you remember? Huh? How old was she then? I don't know. So, but do you remember when when you left, what was what were you thinking that was going to happen to her? You just didn't know? I didn't know there was nothing I could do about it. If I wanted to stay, I can stay, but I can't help. Yeah. It was quite smart, it, too. Uh, you have to feed one more. <laughs> well, and your mother would have been the first person to say go. She uh, knew you had. Uh, you had a few. Um, I just remember one incident. You talked about a few kind of close scrapes with the army. Uh, well, once I, it was my own fault uh, when Eric was still in Vienna. We wanted some documents to send somewhere, and I went to the place where the Jewish administration was because they had some of the papers if we needed copies. And they were taken over by the SS. And you walked in on that? And I walked in on the stupid thing. <laughs> so I, I of course, the, Immediately grabbed me and <laughs> let me do some work, clean up some stoves and some hot uh, Right in uh, that very office? Uh, the guy obviously wasn't too happy with me because I, I Did didn't make a big fuss and I just said, okay, fine, you want me to do this? <laughs> you didn't fight so, back? So that uh, didn't impress me. He ah, you better go. So, Was it really just for a few hours? Well, I spent a few hours. So. What, what, what were you thinking? Like, were you really scared, or were you? You know, you say, if you're scared, and you say, what the hell is this? Do this end between a camp or the way? Where does it lead to? You, you don't know where the you end do. is. But uh, you try to. Do what they say and try to not to cause any commotion. Had, was that your own? And I know you're a very calm person, Kurt. So your own, you would have been very calm anyway. But had people been instructed, like if you do have, no, no. there was no. You, it's, you have to judge your own situation. Figure it out. Figure yeah. It out. Another time, I was arrested on the street. And I think I asked me, "Are you Jewish?" Because obviously I don't look all that Jewish. So. Well, well, I didn't. Well, he didn't know. You didn't have a big beard, right? Yeah. So he then went to a police station where they rounded up some. That was in the district where we lived. So the guy asked me what to do. He says, we we'll talked to him. He said, I better go. Oh, he let you go too? Let me go too. So twice they got caught, twice they got out. <laughs> Why do you think that second time they let you go so fast? Uh, they always said that Jews don't work with their hands and, their, and you know, they're all the uh, lawyers, doctors, uh, all this thing. And oh, they figured you'd just be one of those intellectual types. Yeah. Not much use to them. They found out that I'm just a regular joke. You get that? You know what sort of regular joke? Well, you actually could have been quite useful to them with your trade. Well, not really. They had enough people to do what they needed. Yeah. So. So that was frightening was enough. Yeah. You weren't going to push your luck anymore. So again, you sort of make the best you can and 
that I do get out of it. How much were you able to bring with you when you when you did leave on the? Uh, it was by boat. Was it a transport? No. It was a train. Train. Okay. Uh, um, there were about ten marks, ten German marks at the time. A few dollars, maybe five, six dollars. And your clothes. Just a small suitcase. Yeah. And then so you could take out whatever you wanted to really as long as it was good. People uh, had huge boxes on trucks. Oh, really? They moved the whole house, some of them, and they moved out. There so was no great restriction, as long as you didn't take out jewelry and all the restriction of what you can take. But your clothes and your did you take photographs with you? Did your mother give you things like that to take? Well, I have some photographs. Yeah. Did those come from her? Did you take those when you left? Yeah. I don't know who took them. Had Eric taken a few things too? I think so. Yeah. And that was September 39. August, August 39. I'm at the end of my tape, my first Good. tape. Thank God for that.